For over five years now, we've been experimenting with ways to incorporate growing perennial and annual crops within our chicken composting system for both our use and our chickens. And in this video, I'd like to talk about all those different elements five years in and how well they're working for us. So please stick with us. The really great news is that if you can get plants established within a chicken yard, uh, protected from the chickens scratching the roots and the soil away and from picking the young leaves, they can become some of the absolute most vibrant, brilliant, beautiful plants in a whole system. In fact, this elder, what you're looking at right behind me, this has been in here for three years. I cut it back nearly to the ground this last year. This is the sort of regrowth that you can get from a well-adapted plant within a chicken yard. And the way we established this elder, and this is the way we've done this with most of the shrubs within the chicken yard, is when we planted it, when it was teeny tiny, we simply put a two by four inch welded wire ring around the base of it and included flat stones around the outside of that. Let me show you what I mean. Here you can see a younger installation where I've got a pretty small height of two inch by four inch welded wire. I like this as a default because it's inexpensive and it's easy to cut. There's smaller numbers to cut. And once it's in a ring, it tends to hold itself up pretty well, especially once it's pinned down with soil. In this case, we have a blueberry. It's not exactly thriving in here, I think because of the shade cast from this elder and pH imbalances. But uh, you can see the black current behind it is doing just fine. The idea is that the ring goes around the, the shrub that, or tree you're planning to grow. And you'll notice I put a rock or two on the inside so that a chicken's face, which can reach through, well, she's not gonna show you right now, but they, this way they won't peck apart the leaves and the roots that are right next to the plant. And if we put some stones right on the outside, you can see here they're buried in soil, but that keeps the chickens from scratching away and exposing the root system. Other than that, the chickens are welcome to kick apart soil as much as they want above the stones. And in fact, we'll dump compost here periodically to feed the plants and encourage the chickens to be active. But you'll notice there's almost no weeds in here and the plants are growing pretty well overall. Blueberry exception being I need to add some sulfur to help support it pH wise. This area actually has a whole number of systems going on concurrently. It's a great demonstration of various ways of incorporating annual crops that are on a rotation for our chickens. So for example, here we have, now this is one inch by half inch. This could be chicken wire. This could be hardware cloth. I happen to have this from air prune beds that I was building. And a week ago, if you can imagine, this was sitting right here. I seeded this out to turnip seed, which I got for $2 a pound from a hardware store. Uh, seeded out this whole area, it grew like this, and then I simply moved this over a half foot and the chickens ate that apart. So today what I can do is move this over this way and the chickens can eat this. There's no reason why I couldn't go through and seed this out to wheat or more turnip. It's a great opportunity to take the bolted lettuces, the bolted kales, broccolis, let them make seed in your garden save that seed and be able to sow it out in containers like this. The lid keeps them from being able to jump in and the smaller mesh keeps them from eating everything from the sides. Here, we've got that same two by four welded wire uh, fencing stock that I seeded out some uh, sunflowers from their black oil sunflower seed bag which we get a 50 pound sack of for $20. So the seed is infinitesimally cheap. The amaranths that came up were simply in the soil from past composting that was here. And the chickens can chew the leaves a bit as they grow. The sunflowers being in the middle should be able to grow quite high. We'll leave those sunflowers in the fall to drop their seed, feed the wild birds, periodically shakes them out for our chickens. And this is a great way to incorporate later feed for them. So this is feeding them right now. This will feed them in the fall. Another design we found works well is that same two by four welded wire fencing 
taken, laid flat, and formed into a little bit of an arch with the sides folded over. It's structurally pretty sound on its own. The chickens can stand on the top a little bit here or there. They tend not to bend it. And in this scenario, I sowed out a whole lot more of the black oil sunflower seed. And the chickens have been reaching through and picking whatever plants come up on the edges. That's about as far as their faces can get in. And the sunflowers can grow. We'll guide them through these holes and that will help support them throughout the season. And by the fall, we should hope for some absolutely huge annual sunflowers dropping seed for our chickens and for the other wild birds. Perennial sunflower, the Jerusalem artichoke, Helianthus tuberosus, is also quite compatible with the chickens. This is providing them shade. This is a crop that is both for our chickens and for us. It's the roots we're after. The chicken's fertility absolutely makes huge, huge tubers from this. And in order to protect them from completely getting scoured out, we've got fencing on one side and some short fencing right in here. Sunchokes are so sturdy and so well adapted to begin with that even with lots of chicken scratching, in fact, they enjoy this one spot for using as a dust bath when it dries out. Even with all that scratching, the sunchokes are able to expand every single year, provide a ton of biomass, food for us, nursery stock for us, and food for our chickens as well. As most folks who follow this channel already know, we feed our chickens mainly with food scraps. This is a chicken composting operation, but we supplement their feed with sprouted whole grains. Sometimes what we'll do is instead of just putting that out in a container for them for free choice, we'll spread those sprouted or soaked grains into the landscape. And by dropping again, these rings around, you can see here is wet, uh, red winter wheat, a few days old, protected from the chickens eating them directly. Now it's greened up into a little mini pasture for them. You can see so much other grain that's here, which of course they can just eat throughout the day. But what I can do is to give them access to the fresh greens of this area. It's as simple as taking this ring and moving it over a few feet. So now this area can start to become green and lush and the chickens can browse this down. And if we have these rings moving while continually adding sprouted seeds into such rich soil, there'll be continual pops of pasture all through the summer that could give them fresh greens. Just to the north of me is part of our living wall system. We have some on the other side of the fence, which we talk about in great detail in our living wall series, which we'll link to. But within the chicken yard, we have shrubs and trees that are meant for our chicken's consumption and for ours. So what I'm looking at right here is one, two, three hazelnuts. I put these in two years ago. They're growing absolutely so fast. And in fact, this one is loaded with nuts for this year. The hazelnuts we're interested in eating for ourselves. And so the chickens are doing the work of fertilizing and weeding under them. And the way we're protecting the roots in this particular area is by throwing old rotten mushroom logs. So these were old shiitake logs. Once in a while, they'll still put on a fruit. That keeps the chickens from being able to chew away all of the soil that's in here. And if we wanted, we can move these once in a while to reveal more food for our chickens in the form of pill bugs and earthworms. There's slugs. There's all sorts of other life in here. So that's additional feed. And then we can simply put that back flipped over to continue to protect the soil around the hazel. Now up until this spring, these hazelnuts had these same standard rings we've been using extensively. And I figured they're tall enough and well-established enough that they no longer need the rings. So this spring, I slipped the rings up and over, brought them to the south, and sowed it with a mix of field peas and sunflower, which will feed our chickens later. And in the fall, we can add another layer to this, perhaps honeyberry, perhaps black currants, perhaps aronia. 
The hazelnut is the dominant element within this hedgerow. It is to the north. Things are packed like crazy in here, but there's enough sun and there's so much fertility that it feels like everyone's growing pretty well. To the south and in between the hazelnuts, we've got a whole variety of currants, both red and black. Now these, we've got them growing in lots of different places. These are for our chickens. And normally we can pick them off and feed them to them. That's kind of cute and it's a nice gesture, but really the chickens love them when they've rotted enough to fall off the shrubs. So the shrubs provide them with protection from the heat in the late day. They give them shelter in an emergency scenario if there was a hawk coming through and free choice fruit dropping a handful every hour or so over the next many weeks. The more varieties of currants, gooseberries, yasta berries, honey berries that we have in here, the longer the cropping window that there's a medicinal high quality fruit provided to our chickens in exchange for that fertility and weed protection and shelter from the sun. It's a really lovely exchange, completely compatible with our chicken operation here. A few years ago, we added this cattle panel greenhouse or high tunnel to our chicken yard. This is a four cattle panel greenhouse, uh, seven and a half feet wide, 16 feet long or so. And it's laid out on contour so that as water, we're on a wet site, as the water moves through the landscape after heavy rains or in the winter, it can go through this channel in the center. It'll pick up excess nutrient as it goes. And this spring, we set in locust staves with again, two by four welded wire. Can you tell I like using this material? Um, we set it up high enough that the chickens can now come through here. So after a rain, there'll be water for a little bit. And these beds are now filled with insanely rich compost. I mean, off the charts, rich compost. And that water can get wicked in. The chickens keep it completely weed free in the, on the ground here. And in the beds for this season, you can see tomatoes that are growing. I don't know that I've seen healthier looking tomatoes before. They're really happy. We've got a mesh for them to grow on. Uh, those of you that grow tomatoes professionally can laugh a little at how poor our management is on the pruning. Here we say we'll do it, but it's not who we are. <laughs> it's not who we are. That's for another video. Um, but the tomatoes are in here and lamb's quarter, all sorts of weeds, so to speak, pop up. We let them grow for a while. And then as they get in the way of the tomatoes, we can pull them and drop them to feed our chickens. So it's acting as a living ground cover. Beautiful amaranths all throughout. There's even in the back a fig that overwinters here. We're hoping to get some fruit from it this year. And what I just realized today, I see little wild birds coming and going from these high tunnels all the time. Fruit flies and other flying bugs accumulate in the ceiling during the hot time of day. And the wild birds that use our nesting boxes around the edges of the property come and go. And I think they're harvesting and managing these flies for us. So they're getting fed by this system as well. By and large, our system for the chickens is centered around the idea of compost generation and compost consumption by our chickens. But as you saw in this video, there are many different ways to incorporate perennial and annual crops within a chicken composting system or a static chicken yard that are compatible with the chickens' needs and our needs concurrently, all while creating a lot of beauty, fertility, and food and habitat for wild beings as well. Hopefully this video is useful to you. Please let us know what you think. What are ways that you're incorporating uh, food production, medicines, and fodder for your animals that works well for you? And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. It'd be great to see you on the channel. Thanks so much.